The inventory gap compared to last year, well, it narrowed a bit. Plus, buyer demand it waned this week compared to last year, while sellers coming to the market had actually a good uptick. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update. And let's talk about the golden handcuffs. And no, I'm not talking about fantasy football here. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I'm here to help. The summer slowdown is definitely here. It's slow out there. People are on vacation and things that would normally sell a blink of an eye, well, they're hanging on the market a little bit longer than normal. If you're selling your house for the love of everything dear, make sure that your agent is allowing showings before the weekend starts. Catch people before they go away. Also, make sure they are doing accompanied showings. I can't tell you how many showing opportunities have been lost in my lifetime because an agent can't make it to an appointment because they have a kid's softball game or it's just their day off. It's slow. It's the season. You don't want to let a single buyer slip away. But now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,785 houses on the market. Now, how about that? I welcome a slight rebound in the amount of inventory available to home buyers in Massachusetts. At this point, every little bit helps. And actually, from a year over year perspective, it was a great week. Look at that uptick. Last week, there was a difference of 1,855 homes. This week, that gap decreased to 1,574 houses on the market compared to the same time last year. Now, the 1,574 houses represents a 29.4% decrease in the amount of inventory that is available to home buyers, and that's crazy. And when we compare the inventory levels to 2021, which was the previous low point for inventory, then we have 824 fewer homes on the market, or 17.9%. I remember back in 2021 all too well. And one of the thoughts I had back then is that the market couldn't get any worse, that it would be near impossible to have less homes on the market. Oh, well, that was wrong. What's interesting is that this week in 2021 had a little bump in inventory. Then the next week, there was a pullback. Then the week before Labor Day, there was a little surge of inventory with a huge pullback at Labor Day weekend. And this, for the most part, all makes sense. People rush to get their home on the market before Labor Day. Then people enjoy their Labor Day and start pushing houses to come on the market the week after the unofficial last week of summer. Now, the big takeaway to home buyers out there, if you were hoping that the market dynamics were going to change and get better come the fall, then I hate to be the guy with the bad news, but it's not going to get any better. These tight inventory levels are going to remain. We have 905 single family homes come on the market this week. And like I said earlier, this was a good week for inventory. When you compare it to the same week last year, then the inventory levels were only down by 16% when 1,077 homes came on the market. Like I said, it was a great week. The four-week rolling average is 908 units, so this puts us spread at average. We had 893 single-family homes go under agreement last week, and this is compared to the 1,193 houses that went under agreement this week last year. This means that under agreements were off by 25%. And the four-week rolling average is 871 units, so under agreements are slightly above that average. But the big takeaway is that there was an imbalance between new listings and under agreements. But this time, it was the new listings that were only off by 16%, while the under agreements were down by 25%. In other words, there was less buyer demand this week. There were 640 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $853,000 and a median sales price of $670,000. And then that months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. With the closer that you get to zero, then the stronger seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory fell to 1.28 months compared to last week's 1.32 months. This continues to indicate that it is a very, very strong market market for sellers. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, that it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We have 2,195 condos on the market as of Monday. Like the single family market, inventory increased this week. To give you an idea of the stagnant levels of inventory, when comparing inventory levels today to 28 days ago, inventory has only grown by 1.3%. We currently have 448 fewer condo units on the market today than we did today last year. This means that inventory is off by 17% compared to the same time last year when there were 2,643 condos on the market in Massachusetts. Now this 17% was an improvement from the difference of last week 
but it was 22.7% less condos on the market. It seems that both markets gotten marginally better for buyers when compared to last year. And it's not much, but beggars, well, you can't be choosers, and we're going to take everything that we can get here. There were 437 condos that came on the market this week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 419 units, so we did a little better than average. There were 444 condos that came on the market this week last year, which means that we were only seven units, or 1.6% shy of last year's new inventory levels. A seven-unit difference. Unbelievable. There were 344 condos that went under agreement this week, while the four-week rolling average is 360 units. So we were a little shy there, but check this out. Like Compared to the same time last year, there were 399 condos that went under agreement. This means that the amount of condos that went under agreement were only off by 13.8%. So inventory was down by only 1.6% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 13.8%. And there were 273 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $723,000 and that median sales price of $540,000. In months of inventory, it decreased to 1.64 months from last week's 1.65 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button as it helps with the YouTube algorithm that pushes video out to more folks like yourself? And by the way, subscribing, <laughs> that one doesn't hurt either. Now, interest rates have ticked up slightly for the week. It seems that we are hovering right around that 7% range. FHA loans and first-time home buyers are able to get rates in the high 6% range. It's a big week with the consumer price index data. All eyes is going to be on that, especially with all this talk that the Fed is going to accomplish its goal of a, it's called a soft landing. In other words, that they are going to tame inflation without causing a recession. Now, we've talked about this before, but it's nice to see some national attention brought to this issue. Check this article out. Americans feel trapped in their homes by their low rate mortgages. And as I've said, I get this feeling because I'm one of them. According to Realtor.com, nearly 82% of homeowners feel locked in by their existing mortgage. Now, the article goes on to talk about what they call the golden handcuff effect, all thanks to those higher interest rates. The lower rates affect future or would be home buyers because if they were to move, and they'd have to refinance, if you will, that debt that they have in their current house, but they'd have to take that same debt and move it into the new house, but it's going to be at the higher rate. Here's an example. Let's say I currently have $500,000 left in my mortgage. My interest rate is 2.75%. That would mean the interest that I'm paying on that loan would be $1,145 per month. I'd have some principal in there, but let's just focus on the interest because that's the difference here. Let's say that my house was worth seven hundred fifty grand, and I sold it. And I bought a $1 million house, meaning that now I would be borrowing $750,000 for my new home. But I'm borrowing at today's rate of 6.75%. And the interest that I would be paying on that same $500,000 that I have on my first house, well, I'm essentially refinanced that into the new house, but that same interest payment at that 6.75% is $2,812 per month. So before even beginning to calculate the additional expense of the additional $250,000 uh, principal in my mortgage payment, right? My monthly expensive, they've just gone up by $1,667, all for the same half million dollar debt. Now, you add in the additional principal expenses and the additional property taxes because it's a more expensive house, and they could turn into a big monthly nut. I've talked about how my belief is that in the city, they're going to feel a little less of this golden handcuff effect. Again, I take myself as an example. I just had my third kid in our three-bedroom house. You know what I was doing earlier today? I was meeting with Closets by Design to have them do a custom closet in the girls' bedroom plus a built-in shelf drawer combination thing. My kids, they're going to have a built-in closet before my wife and I do. And it's because we're handcuffed in. We're going to make this house work. Today, it's some Closet by Design. Tomorrow, it's going to be adding a bath and reconfiguring some space. And hopefully sooner rather than later, it's going to be an addition. When you live in the city and in a condo, you aren't afforded those luxuries. A two-bedroom condo is, well, just a two-bedroom condo. It's going to get tight when you bring your second kid home, especially if you work from home. It may delay the inevitable move to the suburb, but that move, it's still most likely going to happen. It's just going to take a little bit more pain than normal. And that's why the city market won't be as affected by this golden handcuff. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, then we help you traditionally, or we can even 
offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then I'm gonna reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always gonna take the time to respond to you. Until next time.